Hello everybody, it's Friday! We are continuing our round the world flight following the path of the Douglas World Cruiser. We are in Onalaska, Dutch Harbor. Because I've got it at the right airport, so it's on Alaska Airport, not Dutch Harbor. Yeah, things we learned last time. Ooh, nicked up prop blade. Mmm. Yeah. We are in a Martin B-26 Marauder. This is a really dangerous pick for me. These planes were widow makers. So, yeah, this might not go well. Don't know. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and start it up remotely like this. Yeah. I love the, the smoke. Hey, look, look. You remember that guy from last time? Yeah, he's still around. <laughs> All right, so we got the B-26. Now, this aircraft, famous for having fighter plane-like performance. This is a problem. <laughs> Fighter plane-like performance can be a real problem. It doesn't float. And we have a 4,500-foot runway. Hmm. This could be a bad choice. But we're going to give it a go. And uh, see what happens. We, we're going to hope that our big, powerful engines and using every spare millimeter of this runway will let us uh, get this big girl into the air. We're a little bit more flap area. Guess we should tell uh, Cold Bay or Unalaska that we're about to take off on runway 30. We're going to depart to the west. Yeah, this is how. See that 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 pavement going into the water? That's for the amphibious planes. All right. Everybody ready? Everybody ready to die? Because that's probably what's going to happen here. All right, we're going to wait until we get. Maximum RPM, manifold pressure, drop the brakes. Here we go. <clears throat> this is scary. Scary, I tell ya. If we make it into the air, then we'll talk about uh, what else we're gonna do for flight here. Where's our speed? Air speed 100, ooh, we're drifting. Okay, there, she, she felt like she was gonna take off. Yeah! Look at that. Big old B-26. Well, okay, not big, but still. Okay, we're through 125. We're just gonna crawl, we're gonna climb out on a direct course right now. Go. Just watching airspeed, watching my climb rates. All right, all right. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna make it. Woo! We made it. <laughs> the first phase. We made it. All right. We're gonna turn gently out to sea. Beautiful. Beautiful. We've made it, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, hey, wind. <laughs> All right. Once I uh, get this plane turned about, see, is it four? No, that's that. There we go. So we're actually gonna be going the other direction, but I think it's safer for us to climb out over the water here to the north, and then we'll swing back around. Now, <coughs> some information on this. I tried 
a uh, VOR to VOR. Well, there's no VORs to, to ATCA. So it's like, all right, low altitude airways. There's no al low altitude airways. There are high altitude airways, but not that great. So I was like, all right, we've we've obviously gotten to the point where we're gonna have to switch over to uh, the old GPS, which kind of sucks. I mean, I kind of wanted to. to go longer without going over to the GPS, but it just made sense to just go ahead and take the GPS here, because there's really no way I could I could do the high altitude airways. So there you go. <clears throat> GPS routing it is. As we climb for the clouds. What our B one to six? Woohoo! Landing is gonna scare the crap out of me, I already know this. See, the thing is, landing, I got a 4,500 foot runway again. This plane lands fast. So, I'm kinda concerned that we're gonna have an issue when it comes to landing. But we'll see. We shall see. I don't think we need a whole lot of altitude, but we're going to keep climbing here. A little bit like that. There is, of course, no autopilot. <laughs> Which means all kinds of fun and games. Well, what it really means is... I can't turn it up to four times speed because chances are at four times speed, I'm not gonna be able to react fast enough to um, do anything. What I am gonna do <coughs> is I'll run the video at higher speed. So basically I'll run the video itself. I'll turn up the speed of the, the video but I am going to have to fly the plane here at relatively normal speed. Well, I don't know. I might try double speed. What do you guys think? Yeah, I can get away with that. I bet I probably could. That is quite a sight, isn't it? Nightmare. They're cheek guns. Yeah, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. I remember when I did the spotlight. Oh, look, there's the view from AK-23, which is Dutch Harbor. Um, I remember when I did the spotlight of this plane. Um, and I was talking about how the, the CEO of Martin Corporation went before the Truman board and was having to uh, defend the honor of their airplane and when the the ceo said oh the reason it needed bigger wings but the reason it didn't get bigger wings is that the army had already agreed to buy the planes and truman said well then we won't buy them and then the martin guy went back and redesigned the wings <laughs> and i was reminded of that because i'm reading a book about truman so it was, it was timely it was neat just need to, to read that and see it from the historical standpoint of Truman's life and times and whatever. <clears throat> anyway, a nice easy climb. I don't know what altitude I'm aiming for, honestly. I don't know what altitude I'm at. Oh, 7,000. 6,500. Okay. I'm betting like 8,000 will be fine. Where is the fuel gauge on this sucker? Is it behind that yoke? Can't be. There's no way we've used that much fuel already. What are you? Carb. Carb temp. Okay. That's, 
That's more acceptable. Nope, we're going down. I don't want to go down. There we go. All right, now, where is fuel? Fuel, 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 fuel. Uh, well, I guess we just fly until we run out of fuel. <laughs> it's not a good, it's not a good way to fly, but. All right, well, that's, that's the way it's gonna be then, I guess. because I don't know where the fuel... It's not, it's not up here for me to look at. <laughs> As the pilot, I do not get to see the fuel load. Is that the fuel down there? Hydraulic pressure. Well, bugger. Uh, huh. Well, there you go. Dangers. Dangers of flying this plane. Interesting. <clears throat> All right, well, there you go. We don't know. We don't know how much fuel, but we have to service it with 100 octane fuel. Is that fuel? De-icing pressure, cylinder head temp. Well then, if that's cylinder head temp, what is that? Oh, carb air temp, okay. Fuel pressure. Bombay doors are closed, that's good. I don't really want Bombay doors open. Landing gear, suction gauge, radio recognition switch, that should be a clock down there. Huh, what do you know? <clears throat> All right, well. We fly until the plane runs out of fuel. <laughs> or until we hit Atka. <coughs> Excuse me, which is uh, 270 nautical miles. It's going to take one hour. One hour. So what we're going to do is I'm going to attempt to put the game at double speed. Okay, I think I can manage that. And then I'm going to speed up the footage, but I'm going to just keep talking and then I'm just going to splice my voice over the footage so I don't have to talk as much. Yay, I don't have to talk as much. You don't have to listen to me as much. Ah. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, honestly. As we get closer to Akka, I'll, um, I'll talk about Akka. But right now, we're just cruising. Still climbing, which is slightly annoying. I can't get the plane to trim itself down to exactly what I want, but it's kind of a re repeat of um, what was that one plane we had a problem with? Is it the P 38? I believe it was the P 38. Well, and the F 14 as well. I guess it's one thing I need to learn I'm just to stop selecting these military aircraft that don't have freaking um, autopilot. Because it's really annoying when they don't have autopilot. Or at least it, it's more difficult when they don't have autopilot, let's put it that way. <coughs> so I'm just going to let her climb. Got her throttle back a bit. Yeah, long flight still. She's clicking at 243 knots ground speed. I could probably get her to go a little bit faster. I don't know if I want to do that though. Let me move this over here. Because we don't need to worry about manifold pressure really. So I'll move this over here so you guys can kind of watch the uh, progress on the old GPS. As we clip along here.
thought of flying through clouds. Actually, that's a really bad spot. Let's move that down to there, maybe? Let's actually just make it smaller. There. Now it kind of goes right there. Perfect. I like that location. All right, so the uh, weather broke. <laughs> what happened is, <clears throat> and this is a limitation of the weather system I use. The weather system I use, sorry, I'm still looking for the fuel. Um, the weather system I use, it requires um, METARs, meteorological stations. But guess what is not up on the Aleutian Peninsula or the Aleutian Islands? Once you leave Dutch, there's not much in the way of METARs. So we're kind of going without. And that kind of stinks, but this is really for the Dutch port, the, the part that we're doing here where we're going to go Atka and then I think there's one more stop in the Aleutian chain <clears throat> before we hit Russia. And then once we tap down Russia, we'll go right down Japan, we should be able to pick up um, some METARs over there. But what the game, what the program does when there's no METAR is it attempts to kind of extrapolate, I think. That's what it seems to be doing. It's sort of extrapolating what it needs to what it needs to do. <laughs> because, I mean, we obviously have weather in front of us. But nothing like what we were flying through. Which is good. It's good. Cool. Can we? Let's try four times speed. Hmm. If I'm really careful, I can do it, I think. <clears throat> Uh, except for this cloud layer is probably going to throw a bunch of turbulence at me. <clears throat> turbulence is my greatest fear when running at four times speed. Because even the smallest reaction I make <laughs> gets magnified because of the four times speed. I've flown an aircraft around on four times speed before, but it's very difficult. In a plane like this, which has relatively tight tolerance in how you fly it <clears throat> not a smart idea not a smart idea at all <clears throat> and it's gray and cloudy and overcast. Ha 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 ha. Uh, yeah. Now we're working our way along. We got several islands to pass on our way. On the bright side, up here we have like room to maneuver. We were down there, like down, like where the guys doing the Douglas Rock Cruiser were flying down at <coughs> below 5,000. I mean, you have a little bit of room maneuver, but you don't have much. That would be scary. Here comes the turbulence. We pop through cloud layer. We got a bunch of turbulence in here. Okay. 
All this crap is heading for Dutch. I guess Dutch Harbor can expect that in the next, you know, few hours, probably. I've done that before since I've got this uh, this free weather thing. I've I've pulled down the free weather for a flight plan that has me flying up into the Colorado mountains, and I fly west just to see what the weather's like, because then I can sort of get an idea what the weather's going to be like here. Pretty crazy. What also is crazy when you think about it is navigation used to be done by the guy sitting in the front of this plane in the navigator's chair. Just do it with a grease pencil and a compass. Shooting the stars, or in this case, well, hoping. There's a different way to navigate. There's a game I used to play <clears throat> back in the day. It was called Flying Fortress. You can actually get it. P-17 Flying Fortress, I think is its full name. You can actually get it on GOG. And it was hard. I mean, you had to fly the plane right. You had to have the, your crew had to be like top notch you could take over any crew member at any time and the rest of them would carry on their duties um, I think except for the bombardier I think you had to do the bomb run but it was just unbelievable I don't think I had very many successful bomb runs I certainly never made it 25 missions I remember that game, it came on three and a half inch floppies. But it was hard. You can get it, like I said, on GOG. I think it's like three bucks, five bucks, something like that. But I mean, you learned really fast. You don't like, when you take off, you gotta nurse those engines. You watch those gauges like a hawk. You certainly didn't fly a lot of uh, double time like this. Four times since I'm accelerating it in post, but you didn't fly any fast. I mean, you were literally, you were sitting down for a bomber mission. You had like, you could jump as long as there were no enemy aircraft around. So like if you, if you took off and you hit a waypoint, then you could jump from that waypoint to the next waypoint, which was off the coast of Europe. And then if there are no German aircraft present, you could then jump to the next waypoint or if German aircraft intercepted your, your uh, bomb group. And man, those German aircraft trying to shoot them down. I think that was the one part I was the best at because I was able to shoot down a lot of German aircraft. Never saved me from the flak cannons or bad navigation or bad bombing or being able to land the plane because that was a problem. These planes were finicky.
finicky little planes they were. Woof. Makes me think about going and getting that game. I probably won't, just because it's just like, it, it would just induce rage. Wow, uh, I hope the weather is good in Atka, or we're in trouble. Especially since we don't know what our fuel fl fuel levels are. We're just guessing. This probably would have been, uh, this er kind of area we're going to, across the, the uh, Lucian Islands and over to Russia. I bet that was the scariest time for the Douglas World Cruiser cruise. It's a lot of water flying. I mean, they were in, in float planes, so assuming the weather wasn't really bad, the seas weren't really rough, they'd be able to land the planes in case of an emergency, but if you landed your plane because of an emergency and I couldn't take off again because it was damaged, the current would just take you wherever the current takes you. Those are some brave people. Very brave people to do that. Or insane. They could be they could have been insane people. I guess insanity was to, to, to some people, what is insanity is sanity. Or some gibberish like that. Oh, cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. Gross, gross, gross weather. Can't tell, really tell if I'm breaking through cloud layer because it's just ocean down there. this isn't the most like super interesting series at least at this point because I'm flying around the world in an airplane but hopefully you guys are enjoying it at least a little bit about 30 minutes out so let's talk about Atka and Atka Island <clears throat> while I attempt to fly this plane uh, coordinates 52 degrees 8 minutes 17 seconds north 174 degrees 26 minutes 43 seconds west it's the largest island in the Andreoff Islands of the Aleutian Islands the island is 50 miles east of Adak Island. It's 65 miles long and uh, 2 to 20 miles wide with a land area of about 404.5 square miles or 1,048 square kilometers, making it the 22nd largest island in the United States. It contains the Korovin volcano, which reaches a peak of 5,030 feet, which is 1,533 meters. The city of Atka, Alaska, which is where we're heading, is on the east side of the island. The 2000 census population of the island was 95 persons, almost all in the city of Atka. On December 5, 2008, President George W. Bush created the World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument 
A crashed B-24 Liberator on the on ACA is one of nine sites on the monument. Of course, I'm not flying a B-24. I'm flying a B-26, but, you know, what can I say? I wasn't perfect. So, 2000, so the 2000 census had 90 something, right? 2010, that's 10 years later, 61, down 30 people. I take that back. 61 is in At is <laughs> 61 is in Atka, the city of Atka. So the rest of them don't live in the city. How about that? Um, let's see. Nothing interesting. There's absolutely nothing on Wikipedia interesting about Atka, Alaska. <laughs> We're flying through some very desolate areas. The major industry is fishing. You probably could have figured that out considering we're yeah, flying over the fishing area. There you go. Not much to tell you about Alaska. What can I say? <laughs> All right, so I brought you back to normal speed here. Let's, uh, let's see if we can jump this whole unit up to eight, uh, four speed. Dun, 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 dun. It's not like it like super speeds anything, but whatever. We're 99 and nautical miles away. So this is my next jump out. Yep, there it is. Yay. I probably need to look up at the airport, don't I? Let's do that. Do 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 at the airport. Um, two nautical miles north of the central business district of Atka. Really? Um, <laughs> 406 employments in 2009. How about that? We are looking at, what do I want? Uh, 16 and 34, 4,500 feet. Okay. 16 and 34, 4,500. 16, 34. All right, so I'm approaching it a beam. Right. Well, I mean, that's not bad. Now that I know that there's a like this World War II thing there, I really want to go to Atka. That'd be like so cool. There's a there's EAS service, Central Air Service, um, which is subsidized by a Congress from Dutch. So this route that we're flying right now, that would be really cool. Huh. I might have to look into that. Would that not be like the most awesome thing? Flying to Atka to visit a monument? Be so awesome. <laughs> Things I think about. All right, cloud layer ahead. Warning, warning, warning. All right, so let's simulate right down to two times speed. Also, want to adjust my tail just so slightly. Want to start a gentle descent. It's going to modulate, I think. <laughs> Maybe it'll descend. Or not. It'll just be a pain in my butt. All right. Come on. Descend, my little friend. You don't want to? All right. So let's lower that tail again. So we're 50 nautical miles out. 
I have no visibility of what kind of approach I'm looking at into this airport. And with this plane, I'm really wor worried about approach. It's got a fast landing speed. Hmm. It does worry me. Yeah, I know we're being pushed kind of off course, but that's all right. Sorry, I'm also looking up the landing speed of a B-26 really fast. Trying to, anyway. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> My landing speed is 150 miles an hour. It's 241 kilometers an hour. That is a pretty quick landing speed. There's my there's my short final landing speed right there. All right. It's going to prove to be interesting, I think. Um hmm. So I'm just going to hold our hold us on the um, on this course for right now hmm. I don't know I don't know I'm trying to think of how we're gonna handle this. the approach. Preferred approach is that. And we're coming in here. So we're actually coming in that. Oh wait, no, that is the approach. Okay, so we should swing around that island. Okay. 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 Good. Normal simulation rate. Get rid of that stupid menu bar. Put this over here. <laughs> Time to take control of our plane. We're going to go around the island. Make our landing. Which I think I want... Let's go for... Let's try to be about 500, you think? Yeah. Okay, 1,000. I don't care. We are, we are well above what we probably need to be, but that's okay. It's okay. We're flying in our awesome B-26. We're going to want to go around, and then, then there's an airport over there. So we are way, way high. But I can't, you know, this plane, this plane just wants to, to go. On uh, bright side, I have a, a sight. I, I'm sure it's a bright side of some description. Maybe not, but I think it's a bright side. I have a, I have a pipper. I can, I can shoot the, yeah. Yeah. Trust me, it's a smart thing. It's cool. It's totes cool, people. It's totes cool. Alright. It's 
21. So let's zoom in a little bit more. It's with the sky. Uh, it, it, did you pick it up, FS Free Weather? Did you calculate that I needed clouds? I don't need clouds. Go away, clouds. Go away, clouds. It's like clowns. You don't want them around either. I promise. Uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't try to bring a B-24. Could you imagine that? Oh my goodness, I'd kill us all. I'd kill us, kill us all. Okay. Trying to see what my markers are. I'm still way high. Is that the departure vector probably, but I'll be a beam of it in a little bit. Huh. I think it was departure vector I was looking at, but that's a okay. I get around this particular mountain here. If I miss it because of altitude, I'm not going to try to force it. Usually I just try to force it. I think what I'll end up doing is I'll actually do a full go around and we'll approach from the opposite direction. But we'll see what we can do to avoid doing that. That must be the mountain they were talking about, the 5,000 foot elevation. That would make sense. All right, so I'm gonna be able to swing around the mountain here. Oh yeah, I can swing around the mountain because the mountain is the high point. Oh, yeah, so we'll just use the mountain as our reference point at this point. <laughs> reference point at this point. Good. Glad you understand me. Alright, we are not quite a beam of it, but it's over there somewhere. Start to turn in though, because we can get around this mountain. Actually, wants you to approach up the uh, there. Okay. Don't get crazy, there. Don't get crazy. Ha! Huh? Little do they know. Oh, wait, I'm talking to myself. Hmm. All right. Well, whatever. All right. I really need to figure out how to bleed airspeed a little bit faster on this plane. That's one problem I've had with this plane. I've kind of toyed with this thing a little bit but it just does not bleed airspeed at all in fact it seems to hate the whole concept that's how we bleed up a lot more airspeed than I expected all right we are 12 nautical miles out. If 
from our target on our run. Is that a runway? That is a runway. I see. I see the runway. Runway. That's actually really good that I see it that far out. I don't see it in here though. there to that little spit of land all right we can do this man we can do this here we come the marauder the marauder One is the runway. I'm confused. I presume the one I'm aiming at is the runway. By aiming, I mean the one on the left. I think that's the runway. So that's what we're going to assume. Okay. I wanna, we're going to want to be really careful with this plane because I know it'll want to run away on us I also have to be careful managing my airspeed on this thing is that yes that is a runway because the other thing is a road okay things things to think about is that a road hmm. yes it is oh okay let's not land on that what is our altitude 4,000 okay so we got to drop a thousand four thousand feet all right, we're past that, so I can. Drop some serious speed and altitude. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm a gun run. I could open up the bomb bay, but I choose not to. I choose to land the plane instead. <laughs> okay, we're at about 150. Just going down. They look out. They are out. They're down and locked. I think. We're hoping. <clears throat> All right. Feels like I'm way too high. I'm at 2,000. Okay. Now, when I did the spotlight of this plane, I crashed it badly. I've got wind coming off the ocean, which is not helping me in the least right now. Aiming kind of down the runway. Kind of cool having that, that sight there. Okay, come on, baby. All right, we're dropping out below a thousand. Be really careful with this plane. Shoot, 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 drop faster, drop faster, drop faster. Don't force it. I'm not forcing it. I'm not forcing it. Don't force it. I'm not forcing it. No, no, that's going to stall the plane. Come on. Come on. Here we go. All right. I want to I wanna not hit it at too hard a clip. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Yeah! 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 Stop playing! Stop playing! Oh, stoppy. Oh, on the stopping. All the stopping. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! 
Woohoo! We made it! We made it. See, he's really happy. He's like, oh my gosh, we made it, dude! Oh, uh, yeah. We turn a plane. It's a Jayhawk sitting here. It's a little Cessna. Could you imagine you're like sitting there in your Cessna and then a B-26 lands and you're like, oh, suddenly my Cessna seems really lame. Yeah. All right, let's park this baby up. We have made it to Atka, Alaska. B-26 Marauder. <clears throat> I think we have one more Aleutian Island chain stop. But I might be wrong. I might be wrong. We'll find out next time. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to fly next time. I don't even know what the range is um, for the next stop, obviously. I don't know what the next stop is. But uh, there we go. Boom. Yeah. We made it to Adka, Alaska in our Martin B-26 Marauder. We made a sweet, sweet landing in a very difficult plane to fly. Next time, we'll uh, carry on in our Around the World following the track of the Douglas World Cruiser. Until next time, happy flying, everybody.